Good morning, friends. Welcome into this worship service this morning. And our call to worship is taken from Psalm 118, reading from verse 14 to verse 29. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the rushes. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live. I will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over, death, over to death. Open for me the gates of the rushes. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the rushes may, may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone has done this. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this every day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hands, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God. I will praise you. You are my God, I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And let us join our beautiful voices as we worship God this morning. Please join us.
Jesus Christ our Savior, who paid the ultimate price for our sins. We come before you, loving God. We thank you that you have not left us in sin and despair. You have taken away our anxiousness and fear and set before us the way of love in your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Please join us. There is no Yes, by the cross. 
cross we've truly been transformed. We're so amazed, and we give you praise that you would save us at such a cost. We're so And every day we're changed into your image more and more. Yes, by the cross we've truly been transformed. And we're so such a cause. We're so amazed, and we give you praise for the power of the cross, for the power Welcome to you this morning. Welcome to our service. Nice to see you all in God's house again. A very special warm welcome this morning to Reverend Franz Mabuza, our superintendent minister, who's gratefully decided to do our service for us today, and we appreciate that. Um, before I do the flower messages, are there any birthdays this morning? Any anniversaries? Anything to celebrate? Any joys? Life. Life. <laughs> I also celebrate that I woke up this morning. Um, we have two flower messages. First of all, wishing our grandson Gabriel a very happy second birthday with lots of love from his grandparents, Annette and Jose. Mm. And then we have one for Mari Kruger. Happy birthday in heaven, Mom. I wish heaven had a phone. Miss our daily calls. Karen Bottian. Mm. Thanks. Come, let us pray. Dear Lord God Almighty, God who was, who is, and who shall be, we come before you, Lord, with thanksgiving and praise. We praise your holy name. You are worthy to be praised. You have bestowed life upon us as your people. You have given us love and joy. You have always protected us from all evilness, and you have led us into paths of righteousness. Lord, we thank you this morning that you are God who is still in control of times and seasons. You have given us the time of autumn and we want to thank you lord that as winter approaches the different bodies receive it in different ways but we want to thank you for those who enjoy the cool of winter lord as we come before you this morning we thank you for the gift of families the families that we have brought into this church to worship the families that are confined in their homes at this time. Lord, we come before you, thanking you for all the laughter that comes out of those houses. We thank you, Lord, for all the friendship that goes around. Lord, we want to thank you for the gift of life, life that comes from you, life that gives us strength to go forth into the world. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done for us 
as we thank you for the scientists who are continuously studying a way on which we can learn to live in the midst of COVID-19. Lord, we thank you for all the expertise, for all the doctors, the nurses, and all the health workers. Lord, we thank you for all those who keep our life in order as we gather in this church, as we gather in the different places of service. Lord, receive our thanksgiving and praise. In the, our name, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, living and reigning with you, one God evermore. Amen. Our scripture reading. We've got two scripture readings this morning. The first one, just after Easter, uh, we read from Acts chapter 5, where we shall commence reading from verse 27 to verse number 32. And our second scripture reading will be taken from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 20, where we shall read from verse 19 to verse number 31. May I start with the, the historical book, the Acts. Chapter 5, verse 27 to 32. It reads as follows. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We have given you strict orders not to teach in his name, he said. Yet we have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on the cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The Gospel. John 20, 19 to 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks on his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples, disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side, stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah 
the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Thank you. This is a morning, the seventh day after we've celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ. A time that has come to us as a sign of hope, resurrected hope, resurrected plans and dreams, resurrected projections. We are at a time where we just celebrate that Christ is risen. It is a time that has started in different ways for different people as it happened with the, the disciples of Jesus Christ. The Gospel of Luke will tell us that on the morning of the, of the resurrection day, the disciples were walking towards the direction of Emmaus with drooping ears, drooping shoulders, disappointed to the level that they couldn't realize that somebody had joined them was Jesus Christ. So our theme this morning is to say our God shows up. Our God shows up. For in case we get lost along the way, of which that is not what I'm praying for. I'm praying for us to journey together as we worship this God who shows up in our life circumstances. The writer of the Gospel of John does not identify himself by name, but his identity can be learned from the dialogue that is recorded in chapter 21, when you read from verse 19 to verse 24. In that dialogue, it is where we come across the words that these words were recorded by an eyewitness who was there, and that is John, and whose witness is truthful, and we believe in that witness. The author call, calls himself by name the disciple whom Jesus loved. He had been convinced that Christ was the Son of God, hence his aim of writing this book was not just giving us a historical recording. The aim of this book is found in John chapter 20, verses 30 to 31. I quote, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and by believing, you may have life in his name. Close quote. We pick up this narrative of the evening of Easter. The disciples are excited and bewildered by the rumors sweeping across Jerusalem that something has happened to the body of Jesus Christ. Four individual groups had already claims about Jesus who has been seen alive. In the morning, Mary Magdalene had, seen, had had a word and had seen Christ who had said, don't touch me before I'm going back to my father. And Peter and John had that experience. The other women who were in the tomb, at the tomb and saw and worshipped Jesus, as recorded in the, in the other synoptic gospels, Matthew 28, Mark 16, and Luke 24. The two believers who were walking to Emmaus, Cleopas and his wife, it is no wonder that the disciples gathered together in the evening in the upper room to discuss what had happened. Those who were heading towards Emmaus had to go back to Jerusalem. But when they came back to Jerusalem, they, they, they hid themselves into the upper room. The last time they were in the upper room was in the Last Supper when Christ washed the disciples' feet when Christ uh, enjoyed the Last Supper with them. 
And now they are in the upper room for a different reason. Confined in that place, full of fear, bewildered by the news. And the fear that they had was the fear of what the, Rome, of what the Jewish authorities would do to them, seeing them together. A time where the leader had been struck off the people whom he was leading. A time where the shepherd had been eliminated from the flock. Now they are all by themselves, but receiving this news, they are in a space of fear and bewilderment. I want to say, the situations, there are different situations in life that cause people together. It calls people to come together. John says they gathered for fear of the Jewish leaders. Their first gather, gathering was motivated by fear. This was the first day of the week. So it is significant that John mentions this fact. For from this time throughout the book of Acts, we find that the disciples began to gather for worship on the first day of the week. But people are brought together when they, there is something fearful that brings them together. And as these disciples were together, God shows up through Christ. In their space of, of fear, Christ showed up. And when Christ showed up, the power of the Holy Spirit was just there. So it says to us, whenever the world we are living in crashes together, whenever we find ourselves in a very fearful atmosphere and environment, we come together in fear, but the presence of the Lord just shows up in that fear. We worship God when we've moved from fear to reverence. The first time they met, it was out of fear. But as we gather this morning, as the disciples gathered on the first day of the week, as opposed to the, to the seventh day, they came in reverence and awe before God to say to him, yes, we've had unpleasant feelings of fear because our emotions felt threatened and we felt in danger. We felt that harm was imminent. But now we come before you in reverence. So when God shows up, he gives us peace. Christ appeared into their space behind the locked doors. As the doors were locked, it is not only the doors that were locked. Even their minds were locked from understanding what was happening. Even though they had received the news of Christ's resurrections, but their minds were locked to comprehend that. And not only the doors and their minds, but even their hearts were locked from the warmth of receiving the news of Christ's resurrection. But when Christ showed up in the closed doors, he said, peace be with you. In the closed doors of our lives, we may have found, some, we may have found ourselves behind closed doors that have been Influenced by what is happening around us. Sometimes there are diseases that are, when you get inflicted with, it is not easy to share with even your neighbor. So you lock yourself with that. Sometimes aging, sometimes unemployment. Sometimes when we are being rejected by the community, by the society, you find yourself behind locked doors of yourself. But when Christ appears behind those locked doors, he has this word, peace be with you. Which says, even if our hearts may be in a state of dismay and chaos, God appears to give us peace. And in our prayers as the church, God shows up and he's faithful to his word to simply say, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. 
and he has this word, peace be with you. This is the way that he greeted them. As it was a greeting in those olden times. The English word will simply narrow it when it says, peace be with you. But in the original language, which was Greek, Christ would say, shalom. And shalom is a word that is inter interpreted to be saying, it is not only the absence of war, it is not only a state, a state of calmness, but shalom envelops many things in it. It envelops richness. It envelops full, li full of uh, 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 life in its fullness. It, em uh, it envelops abundance. So Christ was simply saying to these frail bodies captured by fear, he was simply saying to them, let life abound in you. Let resources abound in you. Let joy abound in you. And that abundance, peace be with you. And that's why he had always said that in many different discourses, whenever he got into the upper room, where he would say, my peace I live with you. My peace I give you. Because peace is an inner serenity that transcends all circumstances uh, of our lives. It is for that reason that we normally sing this hymn, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow, sorrows like sea bellows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. That is kind of a peace. It's peace that exists in the midst of turmoil, when the waves of, of life rages up, we find ourselves in a space where we say, we are at peace. Not that all is well, but because we don't even understand what has begotten us. Because peace can never be understood. When God shows up, he gives us the Holy Spirit. Because when Christ saw them, John puts it in, in this way. The first time they were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And then as they were overjoyed, everything got relaxed. And then to calm them down, he said, peace be with you. As if you were simply saying to them, you will not understand what I'm about to tell you. You are, you are in ecstasy. You are too loud. You are overjoyed. But now this is what I'm going to tell you. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit as he breathed on them. What was Christ doing here? A, fee, a body that is filled with fear is as good as a dead body. Because when a person is captured by fear, that person cannot think in an orderly way. You, you do silly mistakes. You, you can't even notice the seamless things. You shiver around. And Christ was simply saying, preparing them for the instruction, he breathed life on them. And this time, it reminds me of the book of Genesis, where God, after having created humanity, a human being, it was just something mortal that could not move until God breathed life on it and then it started moving. So Christ was simply seeing such kind of a figure amongst them and he breathed life on them and they started realizing that they are alive again. And upon, upon that, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. And this time, this is the first time they had to receive the Holy Spirit as individuals. The Holy Spirit was not to come to them from outside, but it was the Holy Spirit to come from their inside. The Spirit that would be like putting a gadget that would be necessary for future use as he was preparing them for the great day of Pentecost. Receive the Holy Spirit. And they received that. They came to life again. This says to us, whenever the Spirit of God 
gets into, into us. Whatever we had fears of, we become strong to face. And we sing the words, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. No matter what tomorrow brings, but just because he lives, I know, I know that I can face tomorrow. There's this danger that happened, uh, that always happens when God shows up. When, when God's people are gathered, not all of them are in that space. And even if they are not in that space physically, not all of them are conjoined spiritually in that space. It happened with Thomas. When they gathered together in the upper room, Thomas was not there. And when they shared this good news to him, Thomas said, no, 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 unless I see his wounds, unless I stretch my hand, unless I put my finger into the wounds, then I will believe. Yet during that time, John is saying, in, a week, in, a, in, a, in one week space of time, Christ reappeared to them again behind locked doors and said the same greeting, peace be with you. And he had come specifically for this individual because our God, when God shows up, he wants all of us to be with him. That's the word that he has used in John 14, that for wherever I am, that you may be. For in my father's house, there are many rooms. And when Peter, or when Thomas received this news, now Christ said, here I am, stretch your hand, put your finger. And Thomas heard these words, my Lord, my God. When a person, when God shows up, he shows up in such a way that we have a personal encounter with God. And we have a personal encounter with God. It doesn't only become God of the corporate worship, but it becomes God of an individual worshiping God filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he was to give them the greatest news. Go out into the world. Go out into the world and preach to the world the news of repentance and preach to the world the news of forgiveness and preach to the world such that they are released from sin and guilt. So I want to say this morning as I'm about to close, whenever God shows up, he shows up and gives us a purpose. We are gathered here this morning with a purpose to receive and go out. Go out to the world. The, way, the world is the place where we live. The world is a place where we show up that Christ is resurrected. As you go out to the filling station, you have something to do there. As you fill up your car, you have a soul to fill that attendant serving you as that attendant will come to deal with your windscreen, with your tires, with the oil, with your petrol. There is another petrol that attendant needs. Have you been touched by the love of God? And then after having asked that question, you go out and preach forgiveness and preach repentance so that God's people may be released from guilt and sin. And as you do that, God shows up in our spaces whereby we feel that we need no one. God shows up. To show up doesn't necessarily mean that God gate crashes your life, but God shows up. The moment the light of God becomes brighter is the more the world becomes more brighter that you would see the needs of the world. As you go out to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ for healing and transformation, you go out with the power, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may God help us as we go out and show God out as God shows up 
in our lives. Some of you may have been bereaved. Some of you may are, are in a journey. In that journey, you have only called your family to be close by. But God shows up in that bereavement space. God shows up in that bed of sickness. God shows up. In the time when your business is crutching, God shows up. God shows up when you have been served with a notice to say, this is the last month you are to work. God shows up. May God bless the reading and the preaching of his word, now and forevermore. Amen. Christ is enough. In Christ alone. Let us join our voices as we join the worship choir in this service. Please join us.